my name's Elvis. Elvis the Lion. What? What do you mean it's a bit of a strange name? Well, I suppose it is. That's what you get if you let the zookeepers give names to the lions. Still, could be worse. I mean, do you know how many Simbas we have in our family now? Well, so many, we've had to start using second names. You know how it is. I mean, there's Simba Amos, Simba Fisher, and well, 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 many Simbas. Anyway, oh, and then that reminds me, my cousin just had a boy cub, poor dear. They thought they'd let a primary school name the latest cub. Do you know what the two most popular names were? Kitty or Fluffy? I tell you. Hope the zookeepers decide to veto those ones for his sake. I mean, really. Anyway, I haven't come here between naps to tell you about names. Ugh. I came to tell you the story of one of my ancestors. Oh, excuse me. Do you know, we lions like to sleep a lot. Normally I sleep for between oh, 18 and 20 hours out of every 24 hour period. Life's pretty alright in a zoo really, can't complain. I mean, get all our meals fed to us, come along with some meat, don't even have to hunt, just lie around. I mean, sometimes these new keepers, they put the meat up high or trail it along behind a moving vehicle. I think they'll make us do some exercise. It's not too bad though, really. The odd jump, a little bit of a run every now and then, stretch the old legs, you know. At the end of the day, we know we're always going to get a square meal. Oh. Oh, but anyway, it hasn't always been like that, you know. My great, great granddad, he was in the circus. They used to make him jump through hoops before he'd get his dinner. Sometimes they were on fire. And anyway, my ancestors before that had it even worse. I mean, my great, 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 I've lost the count of greats, a granddad from a very long time ago. He belonged to a king. Not the king, Elvis, you know. He belonged to a king oh, named Darius, that was it. Lived in Persia, he did. Life was hard for him, I tell you. <sighs> Never knew when the next meal was coming. He was kept in a in a pit sort of thing. They called it a den, a lion's den. He wasn't on his own down there, you know. Had other lions with him, but they never knew when the next meal was coming. He had to wait until someone got cross with the king. Then they'd open this sort of big stone thing they'd move it away from the mouth and chuck someone in and uh well i can tell you us lions when we're hungry we don't mess about they'd pounce on that meal tear it apart and it'd be gone sometimes there was a bit of competition um my ancestor his name was ardeshir ardeshir he was it meant lion king you know or great warrior and he was a bit of a ruffian he used to pounce in there first. Soon scrap the other lions out of the way if there were the meal at stake. All except this one time. There was this man, a human, named Daniel. He got thrown into the pit. It seems he was a religious sort, this Daniel. And he used to pray to his God three times a day without fail. That's what they say. He was a clever sort and all, and, and his God seemed to help him be successful in all that he did. So 
King Darius, he quite liked him, gave him all the important jobs to do. Only it made other folk a bit jealous of him, you know. And so, apparently the other advisers and like the servants of the king and that, they plotted against him. And they tricked the king into passing a law which said you couldn't pray to any god. All you could do if you wanted a favour was ask the king. Well, this Daniel bloke, he was right devout. So he carried on praying and of course his enemies made sure he got caught. And so before long, he was chucked into the pit with my ancestors. Now, this next bit's not very clear to me because they hadn't eaten for days, but none of them ate him. The story goes in my family, the way it's been passed down, that there were these sort of dazzling bright lights. It wasn't the sun because it was dark in the pit, even when the, the stone was rolled away. It wasn't the sun, but there was sort of like a, a wall all round this guy. And, oh, Deshier, he says he tried to pounce and it was as though a great big hand clamped shut round his jaw right as he was trying to open it to take a bite <coughs> and he couldn't open his mouth well, I'm not sure anything would get between me and a good meal if I was hungry but apparently our Deshia couldn't get near and not, not a hair on this guy's head was harmed he was in the pit all night with the other lions. Some of them said it was angels, heavenly beings. Well, I don't know, whatever it was. Come the morning, the king came back to the hole. He opened the stone, moved it away, because he put the stone over like, overnight. And he called down. Don't know what he was expecting. Maybe he felt guilty, because I think he quite liked Daniel. Maybe he thought there might be a bone or two left to bury, just out of respect for his good deeds or something, I don't know. But imagine his shock. Daniel called up and he said, It's all right. I'm all right down here. No one's hurt me. Well, when the king had come round from his... I expect he fainted. He pulled Daniel out of the pit. Well, our Deshier was gutted. His meal had gone. He knew news when he was going to get a next one. But it didn't end there. Because right the next day, all the others who'd put Daniel in the pit got rounded up and they were chucked in. So our Deshier got his meal after all. And apparently the king passed some law that said that Daniel's God should be respected and feared and worshipped. Seemed like a good idea to me. Anybody who could come between my old Ardeshir and his meals must be mighty powerful. Anyway, all this talking's made me quite tired. Excuse me. I'm going for a lie down. Ugh.